Noctua created some of the most known and well-respected top-of-the-line coolers in the industry, the Noctua NHD15 and U12A being perfect examples of that. While the D15 is one of the most powerful dual-tower air coolers I have ever seen, the U12A become my personal favorite as it's an NF-A12X25 fans paired with that gorgeous single-tower heatsink prove to me that you don't need to go huge 360mm radiators to achieve some sort of respectable cooling. However, However, both of these coolers come with a quite big restriction. The D15 comes in at 160mm height, while the U12A ended up slightly lower than that at 158mm. And this creates quite the issue for many people out there. Sure, there are a lot of cases out there that support 160mm coolers, no question there. But once you start to get into the whole budget D category, you start to see 155, 154, sometimes even even 150, none of which can fit a D15 or a U12A. But before you just give up and become a console peasant, wait, cause Noctua has a solution. And this solution comes in form of the newest Noctua NH D12L, a cooler that was designed to keep that Noctua level of performance while maintaining an extremely high compatibility in form of just 145mm height. With that way too long introduction out of the way, let's finally get straight into it. This is the Noctua NH D12L, the cooler that could be considered Noctua's high compatibility performance cooler. Out of the box you will get the new D12L dual tower heatsink, the fan, a bunch of thermal paste and the usual goodies in form of a low noise adapter and an army of installation hardware. As seen on my b-rolls, the heatsink that comes into use is a dual tower heatsink similarly designed to the NHD15 just a lot smaller in every direction. At the bottom of said heatsink, Noctua went with the same big as copper nickel plated base, but in contrary to the bigger NHD15 counterpart, on this one we just have a total of 5 heat pipes that are traveling up that 145mm high heatsink. Probably one of the, not cost, but like place saving measures that, that made the whole thing a bit smaller. Interesting to know at this point, however, is that although it looks fairly similar to the NHD15, Noctua actually compares the new D12L to the U12A, two totally different styles of coolers. However, this makes total sense, as the U12A is already a bit smaller and far more overall compatible than a D15, the D12L is just the next iteration of that. Look at it this way. If these are Noctua's power lineup of coolers, the D15 is the biggest one, the U12A is the mid-sized one, and the D12L is the small one. Although there are quite a few corners that had to be cut in order to make this thing so much compatible, the fan is definitely not one of them. The fan used on the D12L is one of Noctua's notorious NF-A12X25. However, in order to maximize the compatibility even more, Noctua released a special R version of that fan that comes with rounded corners in order to make sure that none of the edges can create compatibility issues with, for example, motherboard VRMs and heatsinks. As the fan is, you know, pushed more down and yeah, it's... Those new NF-A12X25R fans, however, did not need to suffer any downside compared to their square counterparts. Those are still spinning at up to 2000 RPM, while it's pushing 60 CFM at 2.34 mm of H2O. For maximum compatibility, the fan is installed in between both heatsinks, so that it cannot even start to create any compatibility issues with anything around the cooler whatsoever. But in case that a single fan will not be enough for you, Noctua makes sure to include a secondary pair of mounting brackets for fans. This is also the reason why Noctua simultaneously released those NF-A12X25R fans as a separately available fan. And yes, we have one, and yes, we will use it. But if you try to do it yourself, 
you need to keep in mind that the fan is still 125 millimeter high. So whatever the height of whatever is underneath it is, it will add up to it at 125 and once you get above like 145, well the cooler begins to get higher. Now before we get into any of those benchmarks, let's quickly take a glance over the installation method in comparable sockets. On Team Intel we have the mounting hardware for LGA 1700, 1200, every 1150, 2066 and 2011 dash 3. Over on the red side, we've got support for AM4 and AM5 as AMD decided to repurpose the mounting holes for future sockets. Installing the cooler is a fairly easy process. For an Intel CPU, we need to take the provided Intel backplate and shove the Intel screws through the holes and fix them on the other side using the plastic washers. And make sure to click the screws into the outer holes for LGA 1700 and the inner ones for everything else. From there, position the backplate behind the motherboard, take the spacers, blue for LGA 1700 and black for everything else, and position them on the outsticking pieces of screw. From here, we need to position the mounting brackets in an inwards pointing position with the screw ends pointing upward. Just make sure that both sides are symmetrical because otherwise it, it's not going to be an easy day for you. And then screw everything down. Over on AMD's side, it's a bit less what needs to be done. Remove the pre-installed retention brackets, put some spacers on top, gray for AM4, white for everything else, and place the mounting brackets for AMD in an inwards pointing position and then just screw it down. From here on both platforms, remove the fan from the cooler, splash some thermal paste on your CPU, slap the enormous heatsink on top, screw it down and put the fan back into the heatsink or in between both heatsink. Now with that covered, let's finally get to those benchmarks. Letting the D12L's NFA12X25 spin at max speed, it managed to keep the CPU at 52 degrees C, 3 degrees behind the U12A and 4 degrees behind the D15. A very respectable result considering that this thing will fit into anything what would be considered a budget case. Comparing the D12L to any other cooler in the same size category was kind of hard our task. Take for example an Arctic A35. This thing comes at 158 mm high. The only thing that turned out to be smaller was Be Quiet's Dark Rock TF2, a cooler with two fans and pretty much the weirdest heatsink setup I have ever seen. But hey, it's 11 mm lower and deliver the same result while having one fan more. So it's it's the best I could come up with. But what if we add now that second fan and equalize their chances? Well, in that case, the D12 managed to go down a degree more and stay at 51 degrees C, a degree in front of the Be Quiet cooler and closer to its own bigger Noxia brothers. But now let's also take a look at the truly important graph, noise to performance. Here we are able to see that the D12 managed to keep up a very respectable fight. While it managed to beat the crap out of Noxia's low profile C14S option, it was pretty close to the other way bigger Noxia coolers where it never actually reached temperatures as low or while being as quiet. Once we put that second fan on there, the gaps became a bit smaller with the double D12L almost reaching U12A results but just not quite. Also interesting to note here is that the Darkrock TF2 did manage to keep the whole thing quieter and cooler for a very long time until the D12 managed to catch up. I don't know what that, that thing does right, but it is sure the build way is very special, but it is, it is such an insane cooler. So where does all of this leave us? Well, exactly as Noxia described it, the D15 is still the unbeaten master. The U12A is close behind and the new D12L follows soon after that while providing the user with a way more compatible option. Design and build quality wise, it's the tried and tested Noxia recipe. Sturdy as hell, indestructible and the iconic heatsink with the Noxia brown color scheme is, yeah, you might like it or you might not like it, but it is definitely a very strong look. For the rest, the cooler does fit a, a very specific spot. Not a lot of coolers come in a 145mm form factor. In fact, most tower coolers we've tested come a lot higher than that. And funnily enough, most of them utterly lose against the D12L. I just compared this poor fella to the very best of the bunch. 
But getting back into that empty spot, well, a lot of cases come with something like 153, 154 millimeter high coolers. And at that point, until now at least, you were kind of forced to go into the ridiculously small like NH-U9S type of cooler, for example. And you could potentially go with something like a Be Quiet Dark Rock TF2, an amazing cooler. However, that thing pulls the air from like outside and, and then blasts it on top of the motherboard. And that's a very specific use case for a cooler. And you need to, you know, have the build uh, built accordingly so that that works. But something like this Dual Tower D12L is pretty much the standard airflow path layout that you will find in any case out there. In in the front, out in the back, every budget case does the exact same thing. So where does it leave us? Well, pretty, it's very easy. The D15, U12A and D12L are in that order when it comes to performance and in the exact same order when it comes to compatibility. But no matter which one you go for, all three of them are like on, on Nokia's top level of performance, so you will be able to slap them onto basically every consumer like CPU. And you are just deciding upon size limitations and frankly price limitations. But in both cases, from our side, every recommendation. But okay, this should be it for the new and highly compatible D12L. At this point, a huge thank you to Noxia for sending it over. And if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Noxia NH-U12A. It's my personal favorite. On a side note, we now also have channel membership. So if you want to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, it's a, a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the additional income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to buy a cage for that NHL9X65, because I'm, I'm just afraid of it. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.